Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. This is about take 24 for me on this video. Just so you know, um, boy, I get monologuing and it's something else, isn't it? This is the, the last part of the review for the Cambridge Evo 150. Um, it has been a real revelation having this product in, in, in my system for the last several weeks. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, it is a unique piece. So I was thinking about you know, I'm looking at this thing and it is basically, as I said in, a, in the other review I did, this is the 21st century take on a receiver. I mean, we have streaming, which would be equivalent to a tuner. It does have internet radio, which again is equivalent of a tuner. And I get my local radio stations and I'm down in a basement. I can't run an antenna up. So that's absolutely wonderful. It gives me a um, phono preamp. It's got that. It's got uh, inputs for auxiliary equipment. Like if I want to plug a CD player straight into it or a tape deck into it to play tapes, God knows why. But anyway, I can do all that. It can accommodate that. It's got balanced inputs if I need it. Um, it can run two pairs of speakers. It can uh, connect to a hard drive and give me that information. It can connect to a PC and give me that information on, off of it. So I think that's kind of a unique thing. Um, and I think it is really the true uh, all-in-one product for someone who demands super high audio quality. And this is, make no mistake, this is an audiophile product for sure. Um, Cambridge is, uh, you know, can't question their chops in designing audio products. They've been doing it for half a century or more. And everything they've done, and they've always gotten great reviews and have been held in high regard. And uh, this is a product that is absolutely no different. It is remarkable uh, what it can do and how it sounds. And we'll talk about that really quickly. So the video is going to be in a couple of parts. We're going to talk real quick about sound quality and my feelings about it and, and my, you know, very important opinions. And then we're going to do spin it around, do a 360 on it and show you that it goes in as it goes out as. And then I'm going to set it up so that you can see the screen and the tablet at the same time. And I'm going to talk about some of the features in the Stream Magic software. Now, if any of you watched my MXN10 review, and I'll link to it up here in the corner somewhere, um, I did talk about Stream Magic software, but because the Evo 150 has way more functionality, obviously there's more controls in here that you might need to know about. And the only reason I'm doing that is there may be someone out there that watches this review that's actually considering this product as, as maybe something they want to add to their life. And I want to make sure you got a good handle on it because there's not a lot of uh, information on YouTube about how Stream Magic operates. Um, and I know this video is not going to get a ton of views, but I don't care if it helps someone make a good decision about what they want to buy. And, you know, if they choose not to because of something I said, that's great. If they choose to because of something I said, that's good, too. I just want to make sure everybody's got the information so they can make the proper decision for themselves. So that's why we're going to do a bit of a deep dive in it. So from a sound quality standpoint, uh, one of the big things for me is being able to listen for hours and hours. And I do. I mean, I literally listen. By the way, it flashes when it changes tracks. I listen for hours, several hours every day, uh, and I'm very fortunate and I have that luxury to be able to do that. So for me, listening fatigue is a big, big deal. And my current setup is all designed around not being fatiguing. And I mean, I, that was a purposeful goal was to not be fatiguing. I want detail. I want resolution. I want all of that sound quality, but I don't want any harshness or stridency. And I'll be honest with you, I had a prejudice against Class D amplifiers coming into this because the ones I'd heard in the past were strident and fatiguing and all of those you know things that I don't like. Well, this thing landed in my lap and I turned it on and started listening to it. And it is none of those things. And that really surprised me. And I should have expected. I mean, obviously, technology marches on. But I also should have, uh, uh, you know, known that Cambridge, you know, they've been doing this for more than half a century, that they design really good sounding products. And that's, I think, one of, one of the key or core elements of their design philosophy is sound quality, not just functionality or, or anything. Uh, it is really sound quality. Now, with this piece, they happen to hit... A lot of uh, a lot of long balls, uh, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, from a sound quality standpoint, from a user interactivity standpoint, from a connectivity standpoint. They really this one kind of is, you know, an Oscar winning piece in my mind. So listening to it and thinking about it and considering that I could probably replace my whole system with this one piece. Um, and we'll talk about the goes in is and goes out is on the back of it uh, in a few minutes. But yeah, it could be the one. And it has the sound quality that I kind of demand, expect, want, hope for those, you know, uh, 
really good bass, um, really good mid bass, articulate, deep, textured bass. This is what I would call a fast amp. And for me, a fast amp is an amplifier that can deliver power absolutely instantaneously and then stop when it needs to. So I listen to a lot of classical music and orchestras can be cruising along very gently. And then all of a sudden there's a crescendo and they literally in an orchestra hall, if you had an SPL meter, you'd see they'd be cruising along at about 65 or so dB and then they can get over a hundred decibels instantaneously when you have a hundred plus people in the orchestra all banging away and, you know, strumming away on their instruments. And this can keep pace with that. It can accelerate and decelerate with the music instantaneously. An amp that isn't fast, a tube amp is a great example. And I love tubes, don't get me wrong. They sound wonderful and beautiful and they're cozy and warm and romantic. But they're not fast. They, they, they kind of move slowly. It's like a, a lazy V8 engine. You put your foot down and the torque just kind of wafts you along. This is more like a sports car where you downshift two gears and boom, you're gone. But it has some of that sound characteristic of a tube amp in that it is detailed and clear without being fatiguing. Um, it's not it's not a warm amp like a tube amp, but it has warmth in it. And, and, and it's hard to kind of put that into words what I mean. If you could think inside my brain, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. So anyway, this does all of the things I think that I would ever want a piece to do. And I think that's what makes this an appealing product for the more modern contemporary audiophile, someone who demands that audiophile sound quality, who really wants that high level of sound, but also wants convenience and wants aesthetics. This is a beautiful piece. And as we spin it around, I'll show you. Um, and you could put this out in the, on, you know, on top of an entertainment unit under your big screen TV, you know, pry to place, and the family can utilize it because it's simple to use with the tablet. And there is a, a very useful remote control. And there are controls along the front edge of the unit. Now, this isn't a touchscreen, and that's a good thing because why on earth would I want to have a touchscreen when I can just pick up my tablet and interact with it from 10 or 12 feet away? So touchscreens, I think, are a marketing ploy more than anything else. Hey, listen, if it's on your desktop, then I get it. A touchscreen does make sense. But this isn't that kind of piece. So again, I think for someone <coughs> who's looking for uh, and a, a design, an appealing design, and a really excellent and high level of sound quality. This is a, a great piece for that. Um, it really, really is. So, uh, as I said, sonically, it does everything I want it to do. Performance-wise and features-wise, it does everything I want to do. I mean, the, the, the Stream Magic 4th Gen uh, streaming module in this is just absolutely excellent. And please do not think all streamers are the same. They are not. Absolutely, they are not. I mean, you can get nice little, you know, inexpensive streamers that work well and are great if you're starting your journey. But um, even if you were to connect it to an outboard DAC, it will never get close to this. Um, and again, if I took, if we take the amplifier and the preamplifier and all of the other functions out of this and just thought about it as a DAC streamer, uh, seriously, you're going to need to spend, you would need to consider something like a Cambridge CXN 100 streamer and a DAC Magic 200M DAC or better. Uh, so you're going to be well over a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars to get a, a, a streamer DAC combination that would equal this. Let alone the fact that this has got a 150 watt by two or 250 watt by two, 250 watt, 150 watt by two and eight ohms, 250 watt by two and a four ohm amplifier built in. So this really could be the last stop for a lot of people. I I absolutely uh, was taken by it. I was surprised by how much I was taken by it. So anyway, the next part of the video, I'm going to do a spin around. We're going to uh, talk about the goes in as it goes out as, and then for the final part of the video, um, I'm going to get it so that hopefully if I can edit properly and I'm just learning how to do it, I'll be able to show you this screen and the tablet on one screen. So you can see when I interact with this, what's going on here at the same time. Um, so we'll, we'll try to figure that one out. Uh, the worst situation is, is I'll have both the tablet and the display on screen at the same time. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop for a moment and then we're going to start spinning this unit around. Okay, we're back. I had to power it off um, so I could spin this around safely. Um, the, the, the front panel is absolutely beautiful. You want to talk about knob fill. It's a lightly detented, got a great feel both knobs do. And this has a little bit stronger detent as you, you know, input selection and then volume. So as we spin it around, one of the amazing things about this is the absolute beautiful design of this. Um, as you know, there is another version of this that uh, they did in conjunction with the DeLorean Motor Car Company. But one of the really cool things about this is, I love this sculptured thing, but 
you know, if I had this out in the open and I maybe had a mid-century modern room, I'd want to have a little bit different look. Well, guess what comes in the box? I can take that off and I can put... Oh, I got it going the wrong way, sorry. I can put that on. And now I've got that beautiful mid-century modern wood. It's magnetic. It's really kind of a cool idea. So I can switch the side panels, obviously, to mitted decor. Uh, I think that's... It's, is it an important feature? No, but you know what? My wife thought it was really interesting, so I'll leave it at that. And by the way, I had my wife playing with this with the tablet, and she picked up on it in just minutes. That's how good the Stream Magic software is. So let's get around to the back of the unit here. And as you can see, really nice high-quality binding posts. And there's two pair, one for an A, a, a speaker B and a B speaker pair. There's an RS-232, a traditional uh, D sub 12 or D sub 9 connector on the back. If we were going to integrate it into a home automation system, you know, maybe something like a Crestron or something like that. And then some 12 volt triggers. If we were going to use the pre outputs to run an external amp, we could use the 12 volt trigger to when we power this on, it would trigger the amp on. Mentioning that, it does have a pre-out. Now, the pre-out can be used a couple different ways. You can obviously go out to an external amp, but this thing has so much power. And we, I've driven, so I drove Maggie's and I drove Martin Logan's on it with absolutely no problem at all. So I don't know why you'd need an extra amp, but it does give you the facility to add two subwoofers, stereo subwoofers. Now, it does have a dedicated subwoofer output um, if you just want to run a mono one, and that's what I do here with this. We've got a ground and a phono, moving magnet phono input, which is great. We've got an auxiliary in on single-ended, but we also have an auxiliary in on balanced. Now, the neat thing is, is I can have them both connected at the same time. It's not the same input. Uh, and on some places, you've got to switch to get balanced or single-ended. Not with this one. You have them both. And then moving over, we've got two optical, one coax, spit if input. So if I have an old CD player that I want to plug in, great, I can do it. Um, and that's real simple. Or DVD player with an optical, I can go into it. Or I could take the optical out of my TV and go into it. But I don't need to because guess what? I got HDMI arc. So that's a nice feature right there. And again, across the top of it, we've got an RJ45 jack for cat cable. We've got a USB-A to plug a hard drive into. And that's what I do. Uh, I was using a hard drive with it. And I have access to all my you know, uh, ripped FLAC files or all my ripped DSD files. I have a USB-B, which again allows me to plug a PC into this. Now, in my system, my PC actually is my tuner for my TV. Um, I really don't watch a lot of TV. I watch, obviously, some YouTube videos and things like that. So being able to have, being able to browse, use my browser to watch YouTube means I don't have to watch commercials. And I can send the audio through here. And that was really, really a nice feature for me. And then, the, again, the HDMI arc. Now, I failed to mention on the USB-B, it's got the legendary Cambridge ground lift switch. So if there is a ground hum, you can try one of the three positions to eliminate that hum. Because sometimes it can come through USB. Grounding can be an issue from laptop, PC, uh, traditionally older equipment or less expensive equipment that can have some ground issues. You'd never know it in the PC because you're not listening to the PC necessarily, but you'd hear it through this. And then again, the IEC power uh, socket right there. So that's kind of the whole, and again, the removable panels. That's kind of the 360 view of the Cambridge Evo 150. And then again, the next part of it is we're going to kind of dig into the menuing system and the Stream Magic application. Well, you can see the Evo 150 is in standby mode right now. And I'm going to go ahead and start the Stream Magic software on my tablet, which you should see in the split screen. Now, the two are going to talk to one another. And as you can see, it connected right away. So what I'm going to do is real quick go through some of the inputs and outputs with this. As you can see on the tablet screen, it identified the Evo uh, 150. And I can name it. I can change it. And I'll show you where. But I also have the ability to turn on the speakers on and off or have them off for headphones right from the tablet as well. So there's no, just no, no uh, control on the unit itself. I can also go into settings and change some settings like change the name of the unit so I can identify it for my network or for Apple AirPlay. There's standby mode. There's a volume limit. Again, I can talk about the kids using it. You can set a volume limit so no one will blow your speakers up. It's got tone controls built in. And again, you're not going to see anything on the face of the unit at this point. So we're going to come out of the settings and we're going to go, we're in standby and you can see all of the inputs. So if I go coax, you'll see the Display changed to coax. If I go to optical, it changed to optical. If I go to USB audio, it changed to USB audio, auxiliary, phono, etc. 
also can do Spotify Connect, and if I have the option to do that, I'll show you that. Uh, on the screen on the tablet, you'll see presets, and I can set a number of those presets. So if I choose a preset, first preset, it's going to automatically go to WFMT, and you'll see a change on the display of the unit. And I'm going to turn that down. I can come out to WFMT, swipe to the right, or swipe to the left, and change the volume. I don't want to get caught on a copyright. And you saw the volume control on the screen change too. So we're going to go back to the main screen. And then all, obviously all the recent radio stations that I've listened to, internet radio, I can't stress enough, is really a great part of this whole thing. And then down on the bottom of the screen, as you can see, there is some information about uh, Cambridge products and firmware updates and usage and, and kind of a user guide and so forth and so on. So we're going to go ahead and stop WFMT for right now. And then I'm going to come out and you'll see on the tablet, I'm going to go to along the bottom row, it says home, library, radio, and more. I'm going to go to library. You'll see it just highlight there. And it'll bring me to the last, whatever the last library setting I was in. So if I hit the library button again, it takes me to the main library. So I've got Title Co Buzz are built in. It does have Title Connect as well as Spotify Connect. Deezer is built in, but I don't have a Deezer account. And then, of course, if you have a hard drive, boom, you can access it there. I don't have my hard drive connected right now. But I'm going to go to Title. And what the first series of icons you see uh, down to my collection are all the kind of title icons you would normally see. Uh, you know, the, the music they're pushing out or recommending or whatever, you know, the rising stuff. But I'm going to hit my collection and it'll bring me out to the stuff that I've saved in title. So we're going to go to, let's say, playlist. And you'll see the playlist come up as thumbnails. I can also make that a list of rather than thumbnails. I can also sort it if I want to by alphabetical, recently added, recently updated, how long the song or playlist is, and all of that. So let's go back to thumbnails. We're going to scroll down and we're going to find a playlist called Fahrenheit Project by Ultima Records. The folks at Ultima Records in Europe have been very kind to allow me to use their music in my videos. So we're going to start one. It's electronic music, ambient electronic. Now I've started it on the tablet and it's automatically changed on the screen, as you can see. So if you look at the tablet, I'm going to expand that so we see the album art real big. And again, I'm going to swipe to the left and I have a volume control. And you'll be able to hear that and you'll see it on screen as well. Now, and then I can swipe back to the right and I have my album art there. So that's how you interact with the unit. Again, it's very, very simple. I play pause and also you'll notice on the tablet below where it says Fahrenheit Project Part 4, it'll show you the bit rate. It also shows it to you real quick. I'm going to point on the screen, shows you the source and everything else. And as I mentioned before, the screen on the unit is configurable. So if I want to just have the metadata, if I just want to have the album artwork, if I just want a clock, or if I want meters. So there's a lot of functionality built into the Stream Magic software. So I have access to anything. And if you look on the tablet side, I'm going to click on where you see a little line and a, and a musical note. That's my queue of recordings. Now this playlist happens to have 190 items in it. So I can then look and see, I can pick and choose, I can do whatever I want to. If I push the little uh, pen uh, icon, I can edit, I can remove tracks if I want to, whatever I want to do, or go back and see the title art, uh, the uh, album artwork really big. So that's kind of how you get into the uh, menuing system for, for the unit. Again, I'm going to switch back to the standard metadata because you're all going to be looking at the meters, not me. And then on the tablet, I'm going to go back all the way through back to the home screen. And again, there's where I make all my connections with any ancillary equipment that's connected to it and also get to my settings and also put the unit in standby. So there are a lot of functions. Now, one thing I didn't touch on was the radio button, and this will populate all the radio stations that are available to you in your area. And it, it kind of figures out where you're at via your IP address and so forth and so on. So like WFMT, which we were listening to before, is my local classical radio station, and they're absolutely magnificent. So, but I have all of this. Now I'm in a basement and I don't have the flexibility to run an antenna. And that's really kind of the neat thing is, I have my local radio stations if I want them. So again, back to the home screen. Touch, you'll see on the bottom, right above where it says home library and radio. If I touch that, it brings me back to the particular track. And of course I have my track controls and everything. And I also duplicate those track controls on the front of the unit. Play, pause, skip forward, skip back, uh, cue, power on, and then of course the display change. Love those meters though, right? So that's Stream Magic software. 
Let me turn this down a second. That's the Stream Magic software interacting with the Evo 150. And as you can see, it's super easy to do. Uh, I think I may have mentioned it. My wife came down a couple of nights ago and I handed her to the tablet and I said, find what you want to play. And literally within a couple of minutes, she had found the artist she was looking for, the album she was looking for, the track she wanted to hear and had it playing. It is very simple and easy to use. It is not intimidating. If you're used to using Spotify, Tidal, or Cobuzz apps on your phone or tablet, you're going to feel right at home with this. So that's kind of a look at the uh, Stream Magic software and the Evo 150 interacting. We're going to go back to the main screen now, and I'm going to go ahead and put the unit in standby. And that's it. We're all done. So now I actually have Spotify running on a different tablet, as you can see there. And I'm going to go ahead and I can choose devices. So it may be a bit hard to see. I have another tablet open and I'm running Spotify and I come down here and go to devices and you'll see, I apologize for the shaky hands and the reflection, you'll see Evo 150. So I go to connect to it and there it is. It made the connection instantly. You can see how quick that was with Spotify Connect. And it shows the album art and all the metadata directly from the Spotify playlist. So that's Spotify Connect. Title Connect works essentially the same way. So we're gonna go ahead and reset. I did wanna add one thing. I have apps, I've closed down my other tablet that, was, that I use Spotify to connect uh, or to use to connect with Spotify Connect. Because this connects directly with Spotify, I don't need to uh, have my tablet on and running. I can uh, control things from here. So if I wanna go to the next track, I can go ahead and skip to the next track. I know this isn't going to change because the information is, you know, those long uh, descriptions for classical music. But you can see I can switch tracks right from here. And I'm not using my tablet at all. I can also do it right from my remote control. Now, this tablet doesn't have any control over anything because it's not doing anything other than just connected. It's being overridden by Spotify Connect. So that's really quick with Spotify Connect. Sorry about the kind of choppy nature of the video. Another thing I forgot to mention was, you'll notice it's waiting in standby for Spotify, even though my other tablet is not connected anymore. If I go ahead and hit play, it'll resume back to where I left off in Spotify. And that's really amazing. So for Spotify Connect and Title Connect, it's very full featured. And again, we get meters. So that's enough about Spotify. We'll move on to something else. Hey, listen, I'm sorry about that goofy cut in with the Spotify video. And I chopped it together from a couple of short pieces. Um, I thought it was germane to the conversation. It's an interesting function. Um, I like the fact that I can just turn my tablet off and walk away and this thing stays connected to Spotify and has access to whatever playlist I chose. So if I were entertaining, that would be absolutely perfect. I'd set up a playlist like that one that I had there, that uh, Baroque playlist is, I don't know, 75, 80 hours long, something like that. Um, it's in the, I think in the description uh, of the video. Um, and I could just walk away and not even have to worry about it. And I think that's kind of a nice feature. And I think Title Connect's the same way. Um, I can't connect Title Connect at the same time because I'm connected to Title, obviously, through the tablet and through the Stream Magic software because it has Title built into it. So, in summary, I really do think this is the future of high end audio. I think this is the way it's going. I mean, obviously, uh, there is a convenience uh, metric to this, there's an appearance metric to this. I mean, the aesthetics of this are beautiful. I think, too, the fact that we can have one box that takes care of it all and not a big rack full of stuff, I think that's important. I, um, I know. Uh, and it just anecdotally, I mean, I know my wife thought it was really attractive. She thought it was really easy to use. Um, she asked if we could keep it. And then I told her how much it was and we're just not going to allocate the money for that right now. Um, but it, it, it made an impression. And I, I think that's kind of important to mention. So for me, it made a big impression. I mean, it sounds amazing. It sounds high end. It has everything that I'm looking for. It's going to fall asleep on us. It has everything I'm looking for in a high end product. The sound quality is there. The build quality is there. The imaging, the, the just the detail. It's very, very rewarding. Um, I'm incredibly impressed with the, the Stream Magic application and software in the unit. Uh, I like the connectivity. I mean, it's got everything that I would want and maybe what you would want. And again, I apologize for the deep dive, but I just want to make sure everybody had the information. So if they were thinking about something like this or this product category, they at least knew what there was available. Uh, and that's that. So <clears throat> if you thought the video was any good, and I hope you did, 
Uh, I would appreciate a like and I would appreciate your subscription a great deal. And I would appreciate it if you comment, tell me what you thought, tell me what you think of the product, tell me what you think of the knucklehead that I am. Um, I read every comment and anybody who's ever commented knows I answer the comments um, uh, and I appreciate that. And I like you know, hearing your story and I like you sharing your opinions with me. Um, and that, I think that's important because you're listening to my opinion through the whole video. So I'd like to hear yours too. So please comment. Full disclosure, in the description of the video are some Amazon affiliate links. If you were to purchase something from one of those links, I make a tiny links, excuse me, I make a tiny little commission and it doesn't affect your price and it doesn't affect your ability to return a product you're not satisfied with. And I think that's important to know. So again, playlists in the bottom, let me know what you think of those. Um, and I really, really appreciate your time. I'm, I'm so grateful that, that you guys watch me and, and, uh, and I've get, been getting so many positive comments. It's really humbling and I, I'm appreciative. So thank you very much. So thanks. At home at Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. Go listen to some music right now, please. I'm signing off. Thanks.